First, the control. The group's left in the empty room for 10 minutes. Nothing to read, no talking allowed. Here are some highlights. Please just sit quietly and read it. Next, the lucky volunteers get to read some tax law. The excitement <laughs> reaches fever pitch. People, we have our first yawn. Now, will it travel round the room like a Mexican wave? first two tests are inconclusive. So for test number three, Scotty tries to infect the subjects with the yawning bug. But they appear to be totally immune. Unlike Carrie. Then at Yawn Central, sudden panic. The watchers think they are being watched. Has their cover been blown? I swear that guy's looking or is working in a dark, confined space starting to get to them? None the wiser, the bemused volunteers go back to lives which suddenly seem far more exciting. But what about the results? First, our control, absolutely no yawns. Two, the most successful test of all, the tax laws. We had eight and a half yawns from one woman, two yawns from a man in a jacket, one from the man in plaid, two from the kid, and half a yawn from the woman in red. The woman in blue was like a yawning <laughs> machine. She would not stop. I mean, it was like every couple of minutes she was yawning and nobody else was taking the bait. And there was no yawning at all during Scotty's yawn seating experiment. The conclusion so far is no conclusion. The yawning myth is still wide open. Time to bring in Adam and Jamie on this Except one. Except for that picture. <laughs> I love those guys. <laughs> They're not boring. They're tiny. <laughs> Did anyone walk in and go, hey, hey, no. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Really? Adam and Jamie believe the build team have been using too few guinea pigs and too many stimuli. I, I think for all of these things, you need a bigger sample, you need a longer test. I think definitely. Like, and they, don't, they I, can't know that, we, that we're right. doing this. You can't know that you're doing a test, and really, you have to leave them alone in waiting. the room. Yes, just you waiting. You have to just leave yeah. them alone in the room Sit waiting. Sit here and wait. What you guys are telling us is that we need to go back and try this again. Yep. <laughs> I'm totally bummed. This experiment is just not working. We haven't achieved anything that we put up on our blueprint. Well, I think our biggest problem with the last time is we were not consistent. Like, nothing we did was consistent. We had, you know, different number of people coming in. We were giving them all kinds of stimuli. We just need a do-over. We need to start this over. We put way too much work into this not to get really definitive results. I, we have to come up with a new plan. I think what we need to do is We'll, we'll do it again, keep it consistent, and instead of bringing the people to us, we'll take it to the people. 6.30 a.m. at a local flea market, where the Mythbusters hope to get a bigger sample of test cases. They've modified a truck. Inside, it's a multi-chambered yawning observation lab. Well, the Mythbusters are here to perform a psychological experiment. We needed a crowded, uh, sort of outdoor atmosphere to be able to get our subjects from. And we plan to run through about 30 or 40 today uh, in our custom-built Mythbusters psychological chamber. And uh, we're going to see if we can get anyone to yawn by influencing them. Adam and Jamie set off to chum the waters of the market and net some unsuspecting fans. <laughs> there we go. What do you think? Before long, there's a feeding frenzy around the Mythbusters stall. Sure, I'll do it. Okay, okay. Sure, why not? All right, Alan, so if you'll just go back to the tour over there. 
This time, they are testing one variable only, the seated yarn. Sorry, we've been up since four. Back to your room. Well, come on in, follow me. Sit in the little room quietly, and I'll come get you briefly. There's three yarn cubicles, each fitted with a hidden camera, and one observation chamber, where Tari is on watch. Carrie will yawn at two of every three subjects as she ushers them into their cubicle. So we're going to see if they yawn faster with some influence than without any. Every third person will be a control, which Carrie will give no influence to, and we'll see if there's actually a difference. So the experiment begins, and Tori gets down to some careful observation of the subjects doing, well, doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's starting to seem like the Mythbusters are just way too much fun to evoke even the slightest yawn. Then, a breakthrough. And after the drought, a flood of yawning is unleashed. The Mythbusters suddenly have the Midas touch. Even the local dogs get caught up in the current of yarns that's sweeping the market. The experiment also suggests that some guinea pigs are more observant than others. And finally proving that all good things must come to an end, five hours and 50 test cases later, the yawnathon draws to a close. That was it. That's the last one. We're done. <laughs> For Carrie, it's not a moment too soon. I was yawning all day, to the point where my cheeks were hurting and my eyes were watering. All right, well, after testing 50 people in the field, our largest sample we've ever used on Mythbusters, the results are in. And when the people we tested got no seed yawn, no stimulus, they yawned 25% of the time. When they got stimulus, they yawned 29% of the time. Well, it's not dramatic, but it, it seems like it's pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Busted, plausible, or confirmed? Given how large our sample was, I'd say it's confirmed. Confirmed. Yeah. There's little doubt it does seem to be contagious. And I bet the audience at home right now is probably <laughs> yawning. <laughs>